based up here at Pohutiari, uh, known as, um, oh sorry, based up here to Hapua, known as Pohutiari. They had set themselves up outside of, of the system and uh, set up their hapu runanga, which opened it up for all the hapu within this area, within Ngāpui. Within Ngāti Whātua, we had a hapu set themselves up called Ngā Uri o Hau Moe Wārangi, who were based up here in Kaipara, and they set up their runanga and set up their uh, legal entity outside of, of the um, incorporated society. They opened it all up for every hapu within Ngāti Whātua. Within Tainui, we have, we actually have two in there, but it's only because they got it together at the same time. So we have, we have Ngāti Whawhākia, who's sitting over here, uh, of Waikato. We have Ngāti Wairere, of Waikato. Within Te Arawa, this whole area here, we managed to get a um, little hapu based right down here at Kākehi called Ngāti Mananui, or Tūwhareto and uh, they opened it up for the whole of Te Arawa. Within this whole area here, which is a large area, we managed to get a, little, a hapu who live in the bush in Waimana. Naitamatuhira or Tūhoi. And by that stand, by doing that, it opened up for the whole of all these areas here. Within this whole area of Te Atiawa, um, a little hapu based here called uh, Rukuruka Ki Te Atiawa is actually based on the Hifi track. They don't even have a whare, they have a stone. But they did exactly according to go back and um, empower themselves as a runanga. And within this whole area here, we have a hapu called Kurawaka Ki Waitaha, based here in Christchurch. Now through that, that took over a year and that was achieved by the 7th of November 1998. And by utilising again the free carriage of Westminster going through the upper house, it took it directly to the Crown of England, whereby the, the submission really said, thank you for looking after our, our, um, our business, we're now looking after it ourselves. And the proof is that we've actually stepped outside a government agent and we are an autonomous body. Now what that also did is it, it was a dual process. Not only did it reactivate Kohuiro um, itself, Parliament, but it, and, and reactivated the hapu autonomy, it also reactivated the electoral areas that have been sitting dormant all this time within Kohuiro. There are actually electoral areas and with electoral seats that have been there all this time and I'd like to just go through those with you because the hapu registration actually became instigated the electoral role um, for Kohuero Parliament. Now within Ngāpui there is only one electoral area there and in each of the electoral areas there are four seats. There are two seats for Māori, there are two seats for Ngāti Wikitoria and that is exactly how our Tupane had set it up after 1840 to Tiriti Waitangi, it was opened up for that other legal tribe. So within Ngāpui, there are four seats there. Within Ngāti Whātua, there is one electoral area, there are four seats there. Within Tainui, it was actually divided into two. This is known as Hauraki Tainui, and this is known as Maniapoto Tainui. There are four seats in Hauraki Tainui and there are four seats in Maniapoto Tainui. Within Te Arawa, there is one electoral area, so there are four seats in here. And within this whole area of um, the whole coast, it is actually divided into four. And in each of these four, there's four seats here in Matatua. There are four seats here in uh, Kiwairua. There are four seats here in Hiritanga and there are four seats here in Wairarapa. Within this whole area here, it was actually divided through here, there are four seats there and four seats there. And within this whole area, there is four seats there. There are actually 48 compulsory electoral seats that have been sitting dormant within Kohuiro 
and through the hapu that took it through on the 7th of November 1998, it instigated the electoral roll, uh, which opened up for every hapu right throughout the land and every New Zealander, um, the electoral areas within Kohuiro Parliament. I'd like to um, just go through a time frame that we've um, been working with and I know that although many here have never ever heard of Kohuiro, we've really tried to get this kōrero out but um, we haven't been too, too uh, successful, but uh, as of last week, um, it was wonderful because um, Te Kārere covered two of our hui, and it's now getting out, and it's good to see um, someone here today as well. So we have been trying for a long time to get this out to the people, and we have been boycotted. From the 7th of November 1998, it took it through to another frame, a time frame, which is right up to the 26th of June 1999. What that period did is that it allowed um, an appeal from the Crown of England, it allowed for a period of reappeal, and all that passed, which meant that by the 26th of June 1999, it was totally legal and had gone through. There was a hui in uh, Auckland where that date was carried out and a court was held uh, which activated Kohuiro and which activated the electoral seats and the electoral areas within the whole of the seven main tribal areas. A warrant was then passed on the 28th of June calling on the seven main tribal areas to put forward their nominations for candidates. That period took it through to the 9th of August 1999. We now are into the 4th of September. We were wanting at least the 48 compulsory seats filled and where there were areas and times where we had to check through the registrations that were actually open since November 1998 and we saw that there were different areas that were lacking um, in, in knowledge of knowing about this so we'd just been out on Hikoi um, targeting those areas that needed, needed some boost to understand that this was already in process. On the 10th of August, a second warrant was passed whereby the elec elections and the campaigning began. So by the 9th of August, when I said that we needed 48, we've actually got 69 candidates that came forward and registered before the 9th of August. So it is now in that period right now of campaigning. The elections is actually on the 18th of December, 1999. The uh, publication of that will be on the 26th of January, the year 2000. And by, by March 2000, Kohuiro Parliament needs to be up, filled with all members of Parliament to be running side by side with New Zealand Parliament. Because we had to take it through that legal avenue, each time we did, we had response from Government House. So what I'm saying, this is not treason. It is totally what was history, it was in place, it used to operate, and it is there for us to pick up. It is history, it is authority, because it was in place before 1840. On the, um, after the 26th of June, um, sorry, where are we? Now, after the 7th of November 1998, the submission went directly through to the Crown of England. Copies were sent to the Governor General here in New Zealand, as well as to the Prime Minister. So they have copies of all those hapu. They have all their names there, so they know who's who. They, <laughs> they, um, they are totally aware of what has been happening. 
On the 27th of January 1999, we got a letter back from the Government House um, saying that the Governor-General has asked me to acknowledge the receipt of a copy of your submission to reactivate the Kohuiro Māori Parliament addressed to the Executive Council of Te Runanga Kohuiro. After the 26th of June 1999 and the second submission went through, whereby the whole structures were set in place by the hapu, by the runanga that were going to be set up in the seven main tribal areas, another, another letter came back from Government House saying, I am writing to acknowledge the receipt of your submission to Te Whare Ahupiri o Ngā Kōhere. It would be helpful to know whom you have sent this submission since this would determine how Government House should deal with it. <laughs> so since that time, we have informed the Ariki because everything has been held in the Kaitiaki um, who have informed Government House that everything has now been passed over to the people. It is up to the people to structure exactly how and everything is to be in place before 1840. Uh, which is recognised by and put in place there within the 1852 New Zealand Constitution Act. I think um, without going any further, I'm sure there'll be many, many questions you'd like to ask. Um, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. And I'd like to open this period up now for question time. Um, so, right, this one, yes. <laughs> Yes, hang on. <laughs> no. We've never been under New South Wales government. It was actually set up for non Māori in this country. Yep. Kia ora. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of talk, um, I know especially in Australia, about Australians becoming a republic and New Zealand government generally follows Australian government, so what will New Zealand becoming a republic, how will that affect this establishment of, of Māori Crown dealing with the England Crown when there is no longer the England Crown over the island? Kia ora, Kia ora. excellent question, because that always comes up. Um, <laughs> New Zealand has a treaty. Australia does not have a treaty with England. There was a lot of talk in recently when Jim Boulder was the Prime Minister, and it was actually a personal agenda of his and the New Zealand Business Roundtable. It wasn't a policy of the national government at all. Now, he really pushed for a republic. The Ariki actually let the Crown of England know that no government can dictate to the Crown when a treaty is in place. So he was actually, and there was a little piece in the paper where he was actually reprimanded by the Governor General and he never ever brought that up again. Okay. But since that time, of course, Australia has been pushing for a republic, but um, New Zealand cannot follow Ponto because our first contract was actually this flag here which brought us under the protection of King Henry VIII's Charter. So it was the first protection that we had. Wherever the Crown of England goes, the Māori nation goes. Wherever the Crown of England has access to whatever, the Māori nation has access, which is why we had access to all those British ports throughout the world. However, in order to get rid of the Māori nation, get rid of the Crown of England. And that's exactly what the move is because at this stage all our resources are with the New Zealand Business Roundtable and in order to get rid of the Māori nation and not give the resources back, become a republic. But this is already in process and it can't happen. Kia ora. Okay. But the question was, is how will APEC affect this kaupapa? It can't affect this kaupapa, and I'd like to just explain why. Um, coming back to the tānga within Kōhuiro, there is 
a ancient taonga which is held in there, which actually accompanies the Native Reserve Bank, the Awaroa Bank, which I mentioned, was protected up in here. That taonga is actually the seal of GATT, General Agreement and Trade, which goes right back to Alexander the Great, which comes down through his descendant, Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. It comes right down all the sovereign lines because the whole purpose was to bring all the sovereigns together through bloodline. Before Kohuero went into recess, GATT was here in the Pacific. And it's the old GATT. We, we hear a GATT today, which is G-A-T-T, -T, which is General Agreement, Trade and Tariff. And that's actually government set up. After GATT was, had to um, pull out of the Pacific, after Kohuero went into recess, then they attempted to put in place EEC. And some of you may remember EEC. Um, European Economic Community. And that didn't work, it was unsuccessful. And then a few years ago, the government was trying to set up MAI, Multilateral Agreement Investment, and that didn't work. And so now they've got APEC. So what I'm saying is, with the reactivation of Kohuero Parliament, which reactivates the Native Reserve Bank and reactivates the seal of GATT, it, it, it will not affect. They know it's on the way, which is why all these many things are being attempted to be put in place. Kia ora. Yes. Kia ora. Um, my only amendment to that uh, the chap that got caught, uh, supposedly got caught up in Norwood, uh, fishing. I, How does this work? I see the Confederacy, he went at the Confederacy of Chief. Yep. And uh, it was his right. Now the, the crown is quite a lot in the list of this. Mm. Taking his photo. Mm. If this thing ever did it. Yeah, she's a mic. Yeah, what do you want to I just, I just like to, uh, this chap that got caught up in North Auckland with the uh, fishing. Uh, he, I understand he came under the Confederation of Chiefs. I see it here now. And uh, he's got to go to court, I, uh, I understand. And I'll also lose his uh, vessels, whatever he's got. Now, can we help him? Can we help him now? Yeah. Quick question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kia ora. Um, <laughs> first of all, I'd just like to say that um, Kohuero holding the Taonga and authorities within Te Whare Taonga has always been in place. Um, what happened up north, and I'm not trampling on any mana here did not come through the authorities of Kohuero. Okay, so when it can't, doesn't come through the, the authorities, then the Crown and the government will not recognise what happened. Uh, they certainly are. Um, see, when these all went into recess, it is a matter of those descendants coming forward and re-registering again so that they are actually held on record within uh, to Whare Te Kārere, but also within the Crown of England through the House of St. James. If they don't see that, and it has not been um, carried out under the, the proper authority, which was, has always been in place, it hasn't been recognised. Aye. Kia ora. of the Confederation of Chiefs, and uh, that's up to Ngāpui. Uh, two years at Waitangi Hui, we took the call from my dad, me and a uh, couple of my rangatai, and uh, they got up and did their whakapapa, or better for their whakapapa, where some of the names were uh, involved in the uh, Ariki lines. But they never went through the whole lot because they didn't know who were the uh, advisors 
and the sitting chief of the round table. The advisor was uh, the Aho Dragi Parepu, the Fed of Fed's eldest son, and Kevin at the Haho Ao Tipuna. Now, uh, when I challenged them, I said, look, come and make us uh, one, Pakakuta. But they said, nah. He said, we'll beat the, the system. I said, you wouldn't have a dog show. We're still fighting it. Mm. Now, they wouldn't come under because they thought they had it all uh, sussed out. But I did tell them to come in because we are the holders of the upper and lower house. They were just co uh, confederates of chiefs, but no mana. All the mana is here, huh? you fellas see it here, without tramping on another person's mana. We don't trample on people's mana, we present what the mana is that belong to everyone. And that's the mana on the stage here. But the grace of Mahidarangi is big work. As a, uh, as a research and all that. And the Wairua, the Wairua was that helped us. We worked with the Wairua. Without the Wairua, we, we couldn't have got anywhere. And we're the Wairua people of Ngāti here. So that's where we got with the grace of uh, Mahidarangi and the hard work of researching. So I feel for those people up north where I took the cobra up there. They wanted to fly the flag on the, on the pole on Waitangi Day. I said, if it goes up, it comes on. I was back into the, where it come from to the house of, uh, of the townless. And they said, oh, no, if it goes up, it stays. No, but anyway, at the pride of place, hanging up in the Waitangi house. So everyone saw it when they came in to, to go over to the other side of the bridge. But like I said, a pity that those people wouldn't come to the party, they, they wanted to be on their own. So I said, without money, without powers, or oh, uh, proof, you follow nothing, I said, you're going to be wasting a lot of people's money. So I hope, you know, your party was a good one. Uh -huh. But like I said, uh, we had that uh, board out at Waitangi uh, Day two years ago, and they wouldn't come to the party now. Where are they now, still fighting the courts? We are getting to where we are slowly. Very, very slowly, because the white ones don't travel fast. The Wairua is very careful, and we've got to be careful. Plus the fact, we went into this and we had no money, and we still got no money. And we're owing your fellow lawyer locally, uh, Mr. Grant, for representing us against the Tainali Trust Board. They wouldn't share any money to pay our lawyer. But however, I just let you fellow know that Mr. Grant was a reasonable man, he said, pay when you can. And that's a Rotorua lawyer. So, by the grace of that lawyer of Rotorua, we're, we're where we are today, but we do mean to honor it one day, and I hope not too long, with Mary Parliament, Kia ora. Are there any more questions? Kia ora te kōrua tōpāne. Could you explain, please, the meaning of, uh, like, to do with uh, kohiro? I mean, or the tamahi or the ariki with the taiopuru? So can you just repeat that? To explain the meaning of what um, ariki and taiopuru is with... Um, oh, kia ora. Yep. Um, as I mentioned before, as the sovereign flag represents, is that the seven-point star represents na ariki na rangatira. The eight-point star represents um, <coughs> the sovereign line. I think the easiest way for me to explain this is that these three seals. Oh, okay. These three seals here. Queen Victoria, Waikato Tairia, Governor Hobson. The person who holds the mandate and is direct descendant from Queen Victoria today is Queen Elizabeth II. So she has the mandate and the right to bonk her seal on what makes it legal. The person who holds that seal today from, the, from Governor Hobson is actually the Governor-General here in New Zealand. So everything that's passed through legislation and Parliament must have the Governor-General's stamp on, which is the mandate of this seal. The seal here of Waikato Tairia, the direct descendant and the person who's held that uh, today is the Taiopuru. So he still holds the mandate and right to this seal here, which makes this all at international level sovereign right. Um, there can only be one, one line, one descendant, because there's only one stamp. Okay. <laughs> um, now, the Ariki are known as the next 
the next line down through Whakapapa, Taranga Tira are the next line down again. So they've always held that. Hi. Hi. Well, maybe you should explain that one because. You're good. Kia ora. And black and white. Uh, the Matua has um, got a, a list of all the different tūpuna who were the Aoriki lines back in... Is there any particular year that these were? Were there any particular year? Around what time? Okay. Um, all the names, because since 1947, um, there hasn't been a lot who have come forward and re-registered under their tūpuna. So, for example, this, I think it might be easier if I just show you this photograph. See, the descendants from here are the Ariki line. The descendants from this photograph here are the Rangatira line. Now, they're just the ones that were in place at that time. So everyone who is the eldest of the eldest of the eldest, all the way down, is the direct descendant who would be the Rangatira or the Ariki. Um, since uh, this mahi has been uh, in progress, there have been a few descendants, direct descendants, who have come forward and re-registered because then their name goes back on the list because it's been in recess for a long time. So if I can, you know, just hopefully explain that the Taipuru line, at this time in 1840, there were seven Taipuru, but since that time, <coughs> since 1808, the whole plan was to bring the bloodlines together, um, the same as all the defences were brought together, so that's the Taipuru line, this is the Araki line and Rangatira line. Kia ora. Yes. Well, you are, I'd like to know, this lady called Kuna Bethany, how did you test the next general election? <laughs> are you going to use the legal system to go there or you're going to test all together? Totally autonomous. Totally autonomous because Kohuiro um, is actually non political. I say that because there are no parties within Kohuiro. The 48 compulsory seats will come in with one voice to work for the people. With the New Zealand Parliament, it's made up of all parties. That's what makes it political. There is nothing that the representatives of the members of Parliament within Kohuiro can trade off the health portfolio education, welfare, and all the rest of it. So it is totally autonomous, which will be sitting side by side with New Zealand Parliament. Um, I'm just getting hear a little voice over here. It will not be sitting in Wellington. Reason being is that we had to also come back to the covenant of Kohimarama of 1860, whereby it was agreed by all the Ariki Rangatira right throughout the Motu that the Māori Parliament will be set up in Kohimarama or Tamaki Makaurau. Now there was 900 acres that were actually gifted for a Māori parliament. And those acres, that land is actually where our highest real estate in Auckland is. Remuera, St. Heliers, Mission Bay, Kohimarama, St. John's. That's all the area that was actually gifted for a Māori parliament. There is no land left now, so it's about setting up within that area of, of Tamaki Makaurau. So the parliament will be set up in Auckland. The parliament for New Zealand will continue in Wellington. And we have to stick with that because that is what the mandate that was given by a tūpuna right back then. There's a... Oh, hang on, there's... 